today's class is about the lower limb. So, um, as we already demonstrated, the spine. This is the spine. It consists of different segments, different levels. The cervical level, the thoracic level, and the lumbar level, the sacral level, and last but not the least, the the coccyx, the coccyx on the tail bone, also called the tail bone. So here you can differentiate these areas. The first what you be uh, whichever meets the head area that is called as the atlas what you be and forms the uh, joint over here and this joint is called as the atlanto occipital joint where it provides different sorts of movement like motion of your head, the nodding movements. <coughs> Say for example if you refuse someone response then this is the movement, the nodding movement, the head turning movement the flex and extension movement, these are movement and if you, if you say yes and you, uh, you, are, uh, you provide that gesture to somebody that yes it has, yes it is happened so it means that you are going to agree upon any statement so this is the flex and activity of your cervical spine and this movement is provided by this joint similarly the extension, the extension Yes, if you are, uh, you can say if you are tired, say for example, and you are sitting uh, on, a uh, on a chair and then you sit like this with the neck extension. So, you mean it means that you are providing extension movement on the neck. So, it is also uh, done by the Atlantic So, there are different movements the nodding movement, the flexion, extension movement. Then the cervical vertebrae, as you all know, that it consists of seven vertebrae. The thoracic consists of twelve vertebrae. Then the lower five vertebrae is the at the lumbar area is the lumbar vertebrae, starting from L1 and end up to L5. And then the sacral vertebrae is a single bone, the sacrum, and it consists of five fused bones. The sacrum one forms one single bone, and at the last is the tail bone which is also the uh, fused form of bone it is not single, it is also fused form of bone here you can see you can easily palpate and identify the area yes, that where it makes a giant now coming towards the pelvis area here you can see this whole area this is called as the pelvic girdle here on the upper left this is called as the pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle and this is called as the pelvic girdle in the pelvic area you can see here the crest this is the crest of the hip, the crest area. Then this is the uh, ischium, ilium, ilium bone. This is the iliac bones. These are the iliac bones. The ilium represented on the posterior respect, a rough area. A rough area. And this rough area is called the cubic to grasp. If you sit on a surface, like if you sit on a surface in your daily life, sit on any surface, on a chair, on a table, in a bed. So you are, what you are going to do? you are going to uh, make contact of the pubic tuberosity. So if the pressure increases on this pubic tuberosity, it creates an uh, indirect pressure on your muscle, the hip muscles, and it will in turn <coughs> irritate the nerve structures. So continuously, continuously and consecutive pressure on these structures will lead to an injury. So if a patient comes to your clinic and he says that I have pain at my hip area, so if you are uh, taking a history from that patient, you ask the patient, what, what's, your, uh, what's your occupation? So he says that I am a tailor. Say, say for example, he says I am a driver, I am a tailor. So a question comes in your mind that it might be irritating the structures just because of long driving, long sitting and driving up to two hours, one hour up to two hours or up to three hours and so on. So it will irritate these structures. So that why uh, that area will be prone to an injury and uh, then the symptoms comes, the sign and symptoms comes. The symptoms which a patient told you, the signs which a doctor find in a patient, the signs which a doctor find, find in a patient. So there are different assessment tests then on that area if you are assessing a patient with the hip injury. So it might be the piriformis syndrome, it might be the sacroiliac joint pain. So then you are separated these areas by performing different tests. You are, uh, you are getting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> now here you can see uh, a depression on this area on the lateral aspect of the hip bone. On the lateral side and this 
deep depression. This is not the shadow depression because we say in previous classes that the on the shoulder area, the scapula, on the lateral aspect of the scapula, there is a cavity which is called the glenoid cavity, which is a shallow cavity. And here, on the lower aspect, on the hip bone, on the lateral side, there is a cavity which is not shallow, which is deep, 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 uh, deep, deep cavity. And the head of this lower long bone, it is a type of long bone. Yes. Femur is also a top type of long bone, yes, and in the lower limb, the femur and the, the tibia and fibula, this is also a uh, type of the long bone. Yes. So the head of this femur, this articulates with the acetabulum of the. This is the this cavity is called as the acetabulum, and this similar as the frog. If you dissect a frog in your FEC level, then you know the structure might be the, the structure might be the same. Is like in the human being. So same the structures like that. Here you can uh, differentiate different structures: the ilium ischium and pubis, the pubic tuberosity. The, the you can say the rami of the pubis. These are the projections coming forward. And here this is a tibulum makes a joint with the head of the femur, which is called as the. Uh, you can also pronounce like that. There is no hesitation if you speak like that. That is a tibulum femoral joint. Yes. Sir. But you can simply say that this, this is the femoral joint. Femoral joint. Yes. So this is head of the femur. The ball, the round structure, this is called as the head, which is followed by the neck of the femur. And the most, you can say, the sensitive side and the most prone side of injury or fracture is the neck of the femur. Here, the in humerus, yes, sir. The, the side of injury is the neck of the humerus, surgical neck. And here is the also in the femur there is also this neck of the femur is prone to injury. If you uh, you are uh, taking an investigation and uh, you come up to an X-ray, or uh, um, um, yes of course X-ray. So you highlight the structure that what type of structure is nice. the greater to burger and the lesser to burger similar also on the Humerus. The trochanter, the tuberosity, it is a big thing. The trochanter is a big thing. So it is the femoral trochanter, the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. And the shaft, the, 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 the rest of the structure coming up to the knee joint, the condyles, these, this whole structure is called as the, this whole vertical structure is called as the shaft of the femur. Then there are the condyles. And what type of condyles these are? Femoral, femoral condyles because it is part of the femur. Femur. So medial epicondyle and the This is called as the femoral condyle. One side is on, one is on the medial and other is on the lateral lateral side. <coughs> then it is you can see here a structure. This is a gross anatomy general uh, review. Then we come up to detail. Uh, inshallah, if we um, discuss in next class, so it will be a detailed review of these structures, with the which each structure highlighted. Where where are different? You can say the um, demonstrable areas are the most prominent are the areas of interest on these bones. Are. So we will uh, later, inshallah, on, uh, later classes in the next classes we will discuss those structures and bones. So here you can see as the round uh, a structure here, it's, it represents like a CP of, uh, you know CP? Seeps, yes. Seeps, seeps, you can see the uh, show. It's present in mineral water or sea. Oh, oh yes, sir. It's just like that. So this is called as the patella. This structure is the knee cap. It is also called patella or knee cap. Knee cap, okay. Cap. You know cap, so this is the knee cap, and different uh, you can say injuries also occurs at this joint, the knee joint, and also the patella, also on the patella. Maybe the patella fracture also, but it is a flexible. It provides flexibility. It is a flexible due to the internal soft tissues. It provides flexibility, and it moves up, down, medial and lateral. So these are called glides. These are called glides of the patella. There are different glides on the patella. Superior glide, inferior glide, medial glide, and lateral glide. Okay. 
there and you perform is uh, you you um, you are uh, it is the, you can say the treatment of choice for the patients which comes with knee injuries or with knee stiffness or any problem with the knee if the if the range if there is stiffness and the, the range of motion is you can say minimized or reduced yes. so you perform the glides on the knee you perform the glides over this knee or the or the patella the inferior glide if pain is present uh, on the inferior side so you uh, and it is in uh, grade one you can see grade one type of pain not uh, so much irritating if there is any yes if there is pain symptom and mild pain so you can do it easy but if there is severe pain so you can't directly perform these glides because it uh, irritates a patient it irritates a patient because pain is is that thing which makes in coordination with the with your muscle performance it makes in coordination with your muscle performance so if there is persistent pain or heavy pain you can say a severe pain so you can't perform these things but if there is mild pain you can do little starting from mild mild glide then you can say starting from grade 1 if it if the pain pain condition exists then you can do grade 1 glide then uh, max deep uh, in the second, you can say second grade light and makes a deep push and then give oscillations. Then gives oscillation. Push the, push this patella deep to the grade one and then make oscill oscillations. <clears throat> if you uh, if you are uh, assessing that patient in further follow up and you see that some of the symptoms are resolved. But there is still some giant stiffness in the, in the joint. Many of the symptoms are resolved, but there are certain, or some of the stiffness occurs in this joint. Then what, what you do? Then you make these glides, but provide them in grade 3. Make another deep, you can say push, and then give oscillations. You can perform 30, uh, 3 sets of 30 repetitions. These are the glides, the patellar glides. So the patient symptom is very gradually reduced. Yes. Then, <coughs> same like in performance in grade 4. Making a, some more deep push than the grade 3, and then small oscillations, small oscillations, not large oscillations. Grade push, then grade 3, and small oscillations on the patella. Then it will reduce the pain symptoms. Also, you can provide the PNF technique like flexion exercises. Traction or our approximation, joint approximation. The traction and joint approximation is a technique which comes under PNF technique. But we are not going to highlight these, uh, those areas. We are coming just on this. We are just focusing. Uh, you should focus on that area. What are the causes? What are the diseases? What are the issues that that can happen from these areas? Yes, sir. Then it is followed by another bone. Which is called as the another long bone, and that bone is called as the tibia. Tibia fibula. And on the lateral respect, you can see that there is another long bone. Fibula. Which is attached here tibia with the fibula joint. And this long bone is called as the fibula. Yes, coming sir. Coming up to here with, and makes a joint with the tarsal bones, and tarsal in turn makes a joint with the metatarsal. Metatarsal. So, tarsal, yes, this joint combined is called as the tarsal metatarsal joint. And then it comes and combines with phalanges, so metatarsophalangeal joint, and also then it combines and turns with the phalanx. Yes, sir. So it makes another joint with the phalanx. So these are this whole is the you can see the bone anatomy of the human being. <coughs>